Hi, I'm Swathi Pandey, online editor of Zocalo Public Square. I'm here today with Mr. Ken Auletta. He's a longtime media columnist for The New Yorker. And today he's here to discuss his new book, Googled, The End of the World as We Know It. Thanks so much for joining us today. Pleasure. So I'm curious if we could start. One of the things that most people know about Google is its corporate motto, don't be evil. To what extent has Google managed to stick to that? And to what extent is it possible to stick to that? It's not possible to stick to that. Uh, it is something they can embrace, people who work at Google, and it makes them feel good. And they feel it's, it's people by very idealistic individuals who want to really spread the world's information and do good. And they do a lot of good in the world. I mean, you think about Google. I mean, before Google uh, was as popular and as successful at what it did as it did, has become, it, it, you know, the Internet made information available but you couldn't find it. What, what Google did was make information accessible, and that's an amazing miracle. It's one of the reasons I call the book Google, because it's really transformed the way we use information and gather it on the Internet. But they, they have this belief that, that, and Don't Be Evil captures it, that they are going to always do good. And it's, it's really kind of not true. You're not always going to do good. If you go to China, as they did in 2004, and the Chinese government says we want to sanitize certain searches, searches of Tiananmen Square. We don't want to see any tanks in Tiananmen Square, as there were to, to quell the uprising. So Google compromised. Was that evil? It certainly wasn't good. I guess there are some particularly old media folks who would argue that providing free access to information could be seen as evil. Is should information be free, and to what extent is Google responsible for that ethos? Uh, well. The ethos of, of being able to make the internet accessible, your navigation tool, is a wonderful innovation that Google has advanced. And, and, and when they digitize all the world's books, that is fabulous that 20 million books ever published will be available. Uh, and scholarly journals are available, and newspapers and magazines. So we all have libraries at our fingertips. And for someone in the third world might be able to, instead of a textbook which they can't afford, can do Google searches and, and get the information, particularly if they have a cheap laptop netbook. So all of that is wonderful, and Google is really advancing the world. But Google had also advanced the notion, as you suggest, that all the information should be free. And they, in fact, Sergey Brin at one point said to me, the co-founder said to me, uh, Ken, I understand why are you publishing this book uh, and charging people? Why don't you just do it for free online? And I said, let me ask you a question. How am I going to make money? This, I mean, it's my livelihood. It's my living, writing, if, if I give, give it away for free. Oh, you know, we hadn't thought about that. Google has really moved beyond just being a pure search engine, as you've noted. Um, how has it fared in other fields, whether it's software development, being a media company, being an advertising company? Is it doing as well as it does as a search engine? Well, if you consider that Google generates $22 billion a year in advertising, mostly advertising mm -hmm. revenues, and which is, which is equal to all the advertising revenues of all the consumer magazines in America, and two-thirds of all the newspaper advertising in America, that's pretty good. Um, mm -hmm. But if you look at their other products or applications, do they make money? The answer is no. Uh, they are betting that, that on three big potential money makers, uh, in addition to search, which produces 97% of their income. They're betting that YouTube, which they bought in 2006, they will be able to figure out a way to monetize it. It, it loses money today, but they're actually reducing the losses dramatically because they're putting more professional content, which they can sell ads off of. They're betting that Android, what they're doing in they're creating an operating system for cellular phones, that that will be, they'll figure out a way to make money on that. And that, of course, is the fastest growing consumer electronic product in the world. Four billion of them out there. So that's a big potential market for them if they can figure out how to, how to sell advertising. And you think about it, it's not easy. Excuse me, can we interrupt your conversation to bring you this ad? Get out of here. Who is this? You know. So it's, it's, it's tough to do that. The third thing they're betting on is what's called cloud computing. That instead of buying expensive software from Microsoft for three hundred plus dollars, let, let us let us give it to you much more cheaply, and it will be in a cloud which will follow you on any device you're on and wherever it's a server basically. Mm -hmm. And so they're hoping that one of those three, or all of those three, mm -hmm. will generate money. But the other things, from Google Maps to Street View, don't make money. 
but they're great services. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons Google is so popular, it's all free. Mm -hmm. Do any of those seem particularly promising to you? And is there anyone out there who can compete with Google in any of these fields, much, much less all of them? Well, there are a lot of competitors out there. I mean, the phone company's competing with Google's mm -hmm. Android. Arguably, you know, broadcast television, cable television competing with YouTube uh, and making money unlike, unlike YouTube. Uh, mm -hmm. Cloud computing, Microsoft is competing with them, as is Amazon and Sun and, and other companies. There are a lot of competition for Google, but it is, it is really uh, an incredible media when you think about it. Just a little over 10 years ago, they were in a garage mm -hmm. uh, making no money, and today they make $4 billion a year, and they are valued. The market value of Google stock is almost $170 billion which is much larger. In fact, it's larger than all four of the major media companies combined, almost. They have challenges ahead, and one of the challenges ahead, I think, is not just the internal challenges of getting too cocky and too big and too slow, but the external, the competitive threat. I would worry if I were them, and I know they are worried, about social networks, performing searches, Twitter or, or Facebook. If, if instead of getting doing a search for a new camera and going to Google and getting 10,000 possible answers, which I don't have time to go through that blizzard of information. If instead I can, I can tweet my friends or Facebook, post something for my friends and say, I'm thinking of buying this camera, any of you have any experience with it? And I get 20 people I know and trust, and they, give me, they weigh in with their opinion. That's a much more valuable search for me mm -hmm. than, than 10,000 responses from Google. Google knows that, which is why they tried to buy Twitter in last spring. I'm curious if we could just come back to the title before we go. You mentioned uh, Googled. It has many meanings from just searching for someone to right. Google. A media company feels that it's been Googled. Um, can, you, can you discuss the term and discuss why exactly it's the end of the world and how we should feel about that? Googled is, if you think about it, we don't search for information, we Google it. So it's a verb. Mm -hmm. And, and if you think about its impact on, on other companies, the, the world has been Googled. Just, we talked about Twitter. I mean, Twitter is following the Google model, which is build it and they will come. How are we going to make money? We don't know, but Google didn't know either, and they figured it out. We're going to do the same thing. And if you look at, go to Facebook and you look at the employee benefits they give out, they're very similar to the benefits that Google pioneered for their employees. So the world has been Googled, all, us as citizens, other companies. The end of the world as we know it, the reason I chose that as a subtitle, is that the, Google, if you think of Google as a surrogate for the Internet, for the digital world, it is bumping up into and crashing into all of the traditional media, from book publishing to newspapers and magazines to telephone companies to advertising to music to Microsoft, you know, to telephones. And, and they're being forced to change because of this new world. So their world, the world they became accustomed to, is gone. And, and they either figure out a way to ride the digital wave that Google helps create or crash into it and die.